every year, more than $555 billion circulates in the United States. For the government, making enough cash to go around and keeping it safe is an enormous job. From the U.S. Mint making coins, to the Bureau of Engraving and Printing making cash, to the Federal Reserve distributing it all, we were given unprecedented access to follow the money from start to finish. Much of our currency begins here, in the shadow of the Washington Monument. From the outside, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing looks like any other federal office building in our nation's capital. But inside, it's a money-making factory, churning out billions of dollars a year. Literally, the buck starts here. The Bureau of Engraving and Printing employs more than 2,500 people. Their Washington headquarters sprawls over 25 acres of floor space. It takes two buildings, six floors, and miles of corridors to accommodate all of their production rooms and vaults. What we call dollars or bills, they call notes. From ones to fives, tens, twenties, and on up to one hundreds, they make the equivalent of three tractor trailer loads of new notes every day. Inside the printing room, huge high-speed presses run round the clock. The first thing you notice when you walk in here is the noise. And one other thing, it's the smell of money. It comes from the Bureau's special ink and smells like something straight out of chemistry class. It's their own secret formula, and they can go through three tons of it in just 24 hours. Just like the ink, the recipe for the paper is also a carefully guarded secret. But director Tom Ferguson did tell me a little bit about what makes it so unique. It's illegal for anybody other than the United States government to possess this paper. It's very strong. It's very strong. It, it's actually made from cotton and linen fiber. I was just going to say, it almost has a linen kind of a feel. Yeah. These presses can turn out more than 8,000 sheets an hour. It's about 25 to 40 tons of pressure per square inch on a sheet to get it to print right. When it hits between the two cylinders, it's like having four or five school buses fall on top of you. When they're finished, these notes will be worth $10, but they cost just a little less than seven cents a piece to make. The backs of the notes are printed first. It will take 72 hours before they're dry enough to print the other side. Even though you could never spend these unfinished pages, the Bureau is not taking any chances. The sheets are locked up in a vault to dry. I've seen a lot of signs around that say, two-man rule in effect. What is that? We have to have at least two people in any security at one time, so that there's no single person in there alone. It doubles our opportunity to make sure that nothing is going on, as well as having closed circuit TV in all of these areas. Secure production rooms and vaults line the hallways. There's one locked door after another. Again, we have to badge in. Computer will note that we're going in. And it's granted this access, so we're allowed to go into the cage. In here, three shifts work night and day, putting the finishing touches on the notes. This is where we print the seals and serial numbers on the bills, so we actually turn it into money. Next, the sheets go under the knife and come out as money ready to spend. But everybody here handles it all day long. Do you ever get used to that? Actually, what we say is that if you've been here for more than two weeks and it still seems like money, it's probably not the good place for you to work. It's just product to us. It really doesn't seem like money. It seemed like money to me, money that was being compounded by the minute. Packs of 100 turn into bundles of 1,000, which turn into bricks of 4,000. Can I just pick up one package? Certainly, this is $4,000. Weighs 4, about eight pounds. One dollar bills, this is how it goes out. And it won't fit in your pocket, but uh, That's it's very, <laughs> e very easy to handle. Downstairs is the note packaging room a carefully choreographed whirl of activity. How much money is in here right now? Approximately today, we have over 
100 million notes with a face value of just a little over $4 billion. We could pretty much have double that on a busy day. This is the last stop for the new notes. Here, workers are busy wrapping and packing. Don't worry, there's more where this came from. <laughs> These bundles of money will go to a Federal Reserve Bank, which will distribute them to local banks. Each is shrink-wrapped and labeled with its destination. The main mission here at the Bureau is making new money. But there's a little-known office where behind closed doors, they handle old money. Old, moldy, ripped, torn, burned, and chewed money. Across the street and down a long corridor is the mutilated currency department. Most people don't know it, but if you have a note that's so badly damaged a bank won't accept it, you can mail it to the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Two, three. If their team of examiners can verify that more than half of the note is there, they'll send you a check for the full amount. It's a painstaking job. Examiners can spend hours or even days piecing together tiny fragments. A good examiner would be a person that uh, I would say has a lot of patience, a person that loves crossword puzzles, a person that loves to read mystery stories, because you never know what you're going to get until you actually get it and open up the case. So you have to be adventurous. You have to have compassion. You have to know that this could be the only thing that someone has left in the, in the world. Some notes have been damaged in a flood or fire. Often it's thousands of dollars sent in by people who don't have money to burn. Unfortunately, this person rolled their currency up and it was exposed to a fire. But you can see, we'll be able to take care of it and we'll just unroll it and try to count it. They warn you not to try to fix the money yourself and ask that you send it in its original container. A uh, farmer was out on the farm and he dropped his wallet, cow ate it. And when we said send in the original container, he sent the cow stomach in. Of course, that was not the best smell in the world. So many people have sent in damaged currency, they have a 20-month backlog for the most difficult cases. Volume is up, thanks in part to Y2K. You had a lot of people who buried their life savings, I guess, in the ground. Unfortunately, Mother Nature is not too kind to money. Money is made to be spent. Each year, they examine 28,000 cases and refund $86 million. Back across the street, the new cash is packed and ready to go. Keeping it safe inside the building is one thing. Keeping it safe as it's transported is another. Armored trucks are brought in to move the money to the Federal Reserve banks. Under the watchful eye of the Bureau of Police, every truck is carefully checked before it's allowed to enter the building's perimeter. Once inside, armed police surround the truck, escorting it through two more locked gates. Security is so tight, no one has even attempted a heist. The truck is a vault on wheels that can carry almost $400 million. This shipment is destined for the Philadelphia Federal Reserve Bank, 140 miles away. When we come back, we follow the money to the banker's bank and into a massive vault filled floor to ceiling with cash. Behind closed doors will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Behind Closed Doors with Joan London continues here on a and &E. While the U.S. Treasury is responsible for actually making our money, it's the Federal Reserve in Washington that determines how much new money needs to be printed each year. Most of us only know the Federal Reserve Board through headlines when interest rates change. But behind closed doors, it's the Federal Reserve Banks 
that distribute and store billions of dollars of new cash. The Federal Reserve Bank here in Philadelphia is one of 12 scattered across the country. Their job, to supply enough cash to meet the ongoing demand. Think of it as a bank for the banks. Just around the corner from the Liberty Bell, the Philadelphia Federal Reserve Bank has one of the largest cash operations in the country. Anthony Santamero is the man in charge of the money. Just as the average customer has a checking account balance and has some currency in his pocket, so the, the local bank has some money in its vaults, but basically turns to us when they need more currency. The Philadelphia Federal Reserve Bank turns to the Bureau of Engraving and Printing when it needs new currency. The armored truck that left Washington, D.C. a little more than two and a half hours ago is now arriving in Philadelphia. The bank gets a large delivery of new cash like this each month. This bank deliberately keeps a low profile. Although you'd never know it, judging from the outside, this is one of the most protected buildings in the country. Once inside, the trucks run a gauntlet of security. Locked gates and cameras are just the beginning. It does take longer to go through security at the Federal Reserve Bank because there's so many different ID checks. It makes it much more secure than any other place that we visit. To go behind these closed doors, we agreed not to reveal the exact location of their loading dock and vault or show you the faces of the employees who handle cash. Chief Operating Officer Bill Stone took me on an unprecedented tour of their massive vault. Do you always have these containers like this filled with money? Yep, this is a pretty normal day. We usually have five to eight billion dollars here in the vault on any given day. Billion? That's billion. And uh, that's because we are serving the need of all the banking industry as they uh, you know, demand money, especially around Christmas time or you know, holidays. People have a high demand for currency. There is so much money here that if you spent $10,000 a day, it would take you almost 2,000 years to spend all of the cash in this room. Has there ever been any kind of a security breach here? There's never been any kind of sec uh, security really? breach at a vault of any Federal Reserve office. We've got security right on the perimeter of the building, and just to even get down here to get in the area would be a very difficult task. Internal security is just as important. In rooms where cash is handled, cameras record everything, and employees are required to wear special uniforms. All right, we're in our blues. What, the point of the blues? This is to protect our employees because our employees can never be accused of putting money in their pockets or anything because there aren't any pockets in these smocks. So it's just take away temptation. It takes away temptation. This is the cash processing room. When banks send their excess currency back to the Federal Reserve, every note has to be checked to make sure it's not dirty, worn, or counterfeit. Here, machines hum 16 hours a day, electronically scanning the money. The Federal Reserve is pretty picky. Each note has to be good enough to go through an ATM or a vending machine. 25% of all of the money that comes in here has to be destroyed and replaced with new notes. You know, one dollar bill that might have a life of uh, 18 months or so. For a hundred dollar bill, it may have a life of eight to 10 years. One dollar bills get handled a lot. People put them in their pockets. People put them through uh, the washing machine. And typically, they wouldn't think, maybe you wouldn't do that with a hundred dollar bill if you had it in your pocket. You're probably <laughs> right. Now, if it's really bad, then it goes over and gets shredded? It gets shredded. The shreds go up through the tube and come out here where the blizzard of bills is dumped into huge trash bins. But the Fed isn't just looking for worn or damaged dollars. When a processing machine spots something suspicious, it's hand-checked by a counterfeit specialist. This is not even the same color. Right. Something it's like a bad duplicate, a no. bad counterfeit. Yeah, this is a very bad counterfeit. We're often surprised when a bill like this gets all the way through to us because it's usually been handled by somebody in a retail store. Or maybe and then a bank? Maybe a bank has handled it, and then this bill's gotten all the way to us. It's just totally the wrong color. Counterfeiting has entered the digital age with computers, scanners, and inkjet printers. At first glance, the notes may look genuine, but on closer inspection, 
the paper is usually wrong and the security features are missing. Can I see what a real one looks like? Sure. Let's hold, hold it up and look to see if we can see the security feature. Oh, yeah. yeah see. Now I see clearly right. the, the watermark. Yeah. And over here, this is right here? The That's the security thread. thread. Okay, wait That's a second. Correct. Let me just compare. Yep, you're That's right. That's pretty obvious That's when I hold them up. very, there. very obvious right. now when I, when I look up. Our notes are so difficult to fake, few criminals even try. Less than five one hundredths of one percent are forgeries. In fact, most people will never encounter a counterfeit bill. When we come back, I go to the U.S. Mint, where they make billions of coins and protect billions in bullion. Behind Closed Doors will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Behind Closed Doors with Joan London continues here on a and &E. Nickels, dimes, and quarters, pocket change. While you're busy spending them, the U.S. Mint is busy churning out brand new ones. There are four U.S. Mints, but Philadelphia is the original. It's also one of the largest coin manufacturers in the world. Last year we made, I think it was 12 billion coins, billion with a B, that's a lot of coins. I'm here on the production floor of the U.S. Mint in Philadelphia. The Mint is the equivalent of a Fortune 500 company, and it's run like one. In the year 2000, they made a profit of $2.6 billion. In other words, the Mint makes a Mint. This is one of the few government agencies with a flair for marketing. Commercials help sell a wide assortment of products, everything from collectible gift sets to investment quality coins, all with a healthy profit margin. To make the coins, it takes a massive manufacturing process. Down on the production floor, it's hot and noisy. It sounds like thousands of slot machines hitting the jackpot. Earplugs and goggles are required. Here, 1,500 foot long strips of metal go in and blank coins come out. These lightning fast presses can stamp more than 12 pennies a second. right here? They are finished and each operator checks the coins that he produced to make sure that we have a good product. All right, how do you do that? Well, he'll look under, he'll look at the coin under a microscope. What are you looking for? Well, first you look for the coin turn. You want to make sure that the reverse of the coin is standing straight up just like the obverse. So it's got to be exactly the opposite. Okay. Exactly. And also you want to look for any defects. That one looks pretty good. It does. What happens if it doesn't look good? Well, if the operator rejects it, the bin will be destroyed. And then it gets what, melted down and starts all over again? It'll be melted down and then recycled. So this is where all the coins are counted in bag. In fact, there's about 400,000 Lincoln cents in this bag of coins. In one bag? One bag. It weighs more than 2,000 pounds. It's worth $4,000. While the Mint wants perfect coins, collectors want mistakes. These error coins rarely make it into circulation, so a coin that's been accidentally misstruck can be worth as much as $100,000. It's up to the Mint police to make sure those mistake coins, or any coins, are not illegally taken out of the building. From this control room, officers watch as security cameras continually sweep the area. Police also check everyone on the way in and on the way out. Before these bags leave, there's one last inspection. Get one right there in the corner. Then they're good to go. Off to the Federal Reserve, which gets them into circulation. The U.S. Mint does far more than manufacture coins. It's also charged with protecting our nation's gold supply. You may think all of it is locked up at Fort Knox, but it's not. 
West Point, New York. It's best known for its prestigious military academy, but within its grounds is a small fortress, the U.S. Mint at West Point. The United States Mint can help you. This is John London. Okay, we've been expecting you. As you would expect, security here is extreme. Everyone entering must pass through a maze of steel and barbed wire. There is layer upon layer of security. Checkpoint after checkpoint, door after door. Behind these closed doors, the government not only houses more than one quarter of the nation's gold, but $31 million in silver and nearly $73 million in platinum. Inside, there was one more stop. Okay, Ms. Lennon, if you have a seat in the chair. Sure. And you'll need to remove your shoes. And if you have any metal on you, have any type that'll affect the machine. Everyone is searched for weapons, explosives, and metal. Wait, do you see the green light? There you go. We use a very special magnetometer in that facility, which uh, measures the amount of metal that is uh, in your body, so we can compare it to the amount of metal that's uh, on or in your body when you leave. It takes six laps through the machine to get an accurate reading. All employees and visitors must do this every time they come in. Manager Ellen McCollum escorted me inside. We were always accompanied by an officer. For security reasons, we won't reveal the layout of the building on camera. Where do you see this, Joan? Deep right. inside this already secure fortress, behind two more sets of vault doors is an amazing sight. Bar upon bar, stacked from floor to ceiling, it's brilliant, breathtaking, and just a little overwhelming. About one quarter of the nation's gold is stored here. One thing that really surprised me is how heavy these bars are. You've seen movies and people, you know, get the bar of gold and they run. That would almost be impossible. Uh, they weigh about 27 pounds, but they're very dense. And when you pick them up, it, people are very surprised to find out uh, how very heavy it is. And they kind of step back with their toes uh, because if it drops, you'll know it. The 27-pound bars are so heavy, it takes a forklift to move them. Now, the purity, I guess, is stamped on here, right? Right. 9999, is that good? Very good. It's 999 out of, out of 1,000 Out of 1,000? So it's very good. It's not just gold stored here. These six-foot-high pallets of silver are worth about a half a million dollars each. Surprisingly, the mint's most precious metal is this little bar. Oh, now. <laughs> okay, I thought this wasn't going to be so heavy because it was a little smaller. This is uh, platinum, yes, right? it is. Platinum is far uh, more valuable than gold right now. Is it heavier than gold? It's heavier, yes. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so this is not like a piece of a bar. This is how they... This is a bar. It's a whole bar. Yes, it is. One of the rarest and most valuable of all precious metals, platinum is selling for nearly $600 an ounce. How much is this little pallet here? Right platinum. there, you probably have about thirteen and a half million dollars. Thirteen and a half million? Yes. Wow. But they're not just guarding the precious metals. They're using some of them to make investment quality coins. Behind closed doors here is an entire manufacturing operation making collectors coins from silver, gold, and platinum. All right, now we are in the pressing room, is that what they call it? We're in the press room, yes, and this is where we strike all the coins. The Mint allowed me the unique opportunity to make one of their most valuable collector coins, a one-ounce silver bullion dollar. Hold on to it. Hold it down. It's a silver dollar now. All right, let's see. Wow, it's really pretty. Look at that. Can you guys see that? It's the Walking Liberty. My coin, like all these investment quality coins, will be hand checked, boxed, and shipped. For me, seeing all of this wealth in one place was astounding. But what about the people who work with it day in and day out? Every time I go into a mint, I am still amazed at all the money that is there and all the gold 
that is available and is stored in those facilities. I have never lost my awe at all of that value. From the U.S. Mint, to the Federal Reserve, to the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, they're making the money that makes the economy run behind closed doors.